Good morning. Welcome to Yap. Today I'm joined by Mel. Mel, how's it going? Good, good. <laughs> How good? Like, bro. Like on a scale of 1 to 10? Yeah. I'm kind of a 7. Uh-huh. I decided to sleep in today. I yeah. told myself that I was going to go to the gym at 5, <laughs> but then I decided to sleep two extra hours. <laughs> and low key, I yeah. don't feel bad about it. That's good. Because no, I good. needed to sleep. That's good. <laughs> I think that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna, gonna go home and sleep. I because I wanted to go to the gym today, but mm. I um I attempted uh, meal prepping yesterday. I attempted okay. like I I don't know why I got excited and I um, went to Kmart and they had these like ten two compartment like takeout boxes and stuff takeout oh. containers food containers. Oh. They were like ten for ten dollars. I was like I could not say no to that, so I got them. <gasps> And bro, cooking is actually so fucking exhausting and so long and so tiring. Uh, I just don't. Lol, not me like... hearing that as cocaine. And no, 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 no. Speaking of cocaine. <laughs> yeah, okay, go. <laughs> I was walking down K Road, did yeah. a little bit of grocery shopping because the closest Asian supermarket to me is literally the one down on K Road, the Lim oh, yeah. Char supermarket place. Yeah. And as I was walking down, right? And, like, I got my groceries, whatever. And then, like, I walk back to Ponsonby. Yeah. I see, this <laughs> I see this guy just swinging from, like, one of the, like, street signs. Yeah. Just, like, having a good old time. Yeah. And I see that he has, like, two other people that he's with. And they're, like, fully on the floor. K-Road floor. Yeah. With, like, the little wrapper thing. And they're cutting white lines. And I'm, like... On, like, out on the, the sidewalk. Yeah. Out in the open. And I was like, whoa, people be yeah. bold these days. What time was this? Boy, like 1. 1, a, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Yeah, it was in the afternoon. It was in broad daylight. I was yeah. like, where are the cops? Yeah. Damn, cutting what? <laughs> no, for fuck? real. I was so shook. Yeah. I was like walking past them and like they were literally right next to me. And I was like, okay, let's walk faster. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> the fuck? I, like... <laughs> Were people watching, or was it just like, oh, just another, th- not just another day? Now right? people were just walking past, like it's an it's everyday crazy. kind of thing. It's, it's like, crazy. yeah, that was the first time I saw something like that. Yeah. So that was kind of wild. Yeah. Mm. No, you didn't get tempted to like join in, but it's like. No, <laughs> no, ain't nothing can convince me to try cocaine off yep. the K Road floor. Yeah, yeah. Bro, I feel dirty walking on the K Road's floor. <laughs> like, let alone fucking anything. That being said, though, yeah. low key, K Road, I feel like lately, Queen Street, K Road has been a bit depressing. Yeah. But when I first came to New Zealand, K Road was low key my favorite place. True? My, my favorite street. Why? I think it's so eclectic. It's full of character yeah. and it's like so different. Full of character is definitely one way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, oh. Other side note. Yeah. We're here. Let's do <laughs> Did you know? What? That spring onions. Yeah. Is actually, this the Maddie thing? Yeah. Yes. How, how is that? I'm okay. I'm sorry. Like, Maddie, bless her, and I guess you now. But, like, how? Like, some of how the stuff you guys. How is it not common, common? It's not common knowledge to me. I mean, is it not obvious? Like, I don't know. Like, it's, no. It's an onion that hasn't, like, the white part wasn't hasn't been coming on you yet. No. No, oh, fair, fair, no. Fair, fair, fair. But for context, if you also don't know, yes, um, spring onions are actually onion babies. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Look it up. Yeah. It's true. Vegans? <laughs> no. But, <laughs> <laughs> wait. So you find out from Maddie or with Maddie or how, how um, did that work? My flatmates saw her story. Yeah. They're friends with Maddie. Yeah. Um. Because many comes to my things sometimes. Um, and yeah, they were just like, by the way. And it was a whole heated debate about it. Yeah. And one flatmate was super convinced that it was not. Yeah. So she was literally trying to find the one, the one website that would prove her point. Yeah, yeah. When all the other websites yeah, were yeah. saying <laughs> otherwise. Uh, it was crack up. Yeah. It cost a bit of a divide within yeah. the household, but it's all good. I'm not a, I'm yeah. not. I'm not. I'm not a child of divorce. Fair, 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 fair. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I thought it was obvious, bro. <laughs> spring <laughs> breaking news: onions are breaking news. Yeah, spring onions are pre pre. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. 
Anyways, all right. All so, right. <laughs> this is a podcast. You know who else is a podcast? Who else? Call her daddy is a podcast. <laughs> 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 Bruh. <laughs> All right. No shit. No. So, um, obviously, with the with the rising, what well, there's like I think just under thirty, maybe twenty five days to go for, with the United States election this year, mm-hmm. which is scary because mm-hmm. both candidates suck. I uh, I said it. Um, no, they're both candidates are now trying to. They're doing like the unprecedented, which is. Like, going on, making appearances on shows that are not conventionally, like, Fox, CBS, blah, blah, blah. Like, they're going for these non-traditional media places now. Mm. I.e. Kamala Harris on Call Her Daddy. Mm. So, she went on the podcast. The podcast got over 5 million views in, like, 24 hours. some, Some stupid numbers. Crazy. And, yeah, I mean... You did you watch it? A little bit. Okay. Honestly, how do you feel about it? I, I think it was very interesting. I think it was an interesting choice mm. for Camilla Harris, um, but apparently it was done on an invite basis. So yeah. like Alex Cooper, the host of Call Her Daddy, yeah. reached out to both Trump and Camilla yeah. to do the interview, but Trump had declined. declined. So, she ended up with Camilla. Yep. But I think it made sense for Camilla because of, like, when you think of Call Her Daddy and what type of viewer or what type of listener is listening into her stuff, it would align more with Camilla. Yeah. But I, yeah, I think I think it's super interesting to see them just kind of step into the space. Yeah. And I want to say that it's because, like, a lot of news outlets or news places, yeah. like people think that they're they're like heavily influenced by, yeah. like for example, like Fox News, I think has a reputation of being like very conservative, yeah. and um, like the BBC in the UK yeah. are known to be very influenced by the media. Like they're not meant; they have like a pact with the monarch yeah, to like not comment on yeah. them. Yeah. It's There's wild. a narrative that they run with. Every, every, I guess, news company has something that has a certain talking points that they're always has a certain storyline that they're running with. I thought it was really interesting because, I mean, yeah, it was a 45 minute podcast. I did listen to like some, like the first 20 minutes mm-hmm. and then I just like zoned out. But I thought it was interesting that Alex Cooper, the host, at the beginning was like, I don't know if the word is like pleading, but like she was almost pleading with the audience that like disclaimer guys, I did invite both. Da, 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 like I don't know, I just I don't know what the word is. But I'll just move on from that. No 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 keep keep, keep Okay, so keep no, down. I think I think it was like disingenuous for her to be like, Okay, for for, for the record, we did invite Trump, but he'd said no. How so? Because it's basically like, okay, so the second that episode came out, she had lost a couple, of, a bunch of followers, right? Yeah. And her saying that in the beginning of the podcast was like kind of being like, uh, like trying to, I don't know what the word is, like trying to beat the audience to the gun of like, I didn't invite both, I promise, this is like unbiased, blah, blah, blah. When it's like, she probably is biased, she probably is going to vote for Kamala, just like, like run with that. Nah, I feel like, to be honest, like, it's important for someone like that to take charge of the narrative. Because otherwise, like, if you're not taking charge of the story, the story ends up running you. And at least in this sense, she knew, like, she knew that she needed to to be ahead of it. And she knew what people were going to say. People are going to feel one way or the other. And, like, with the Trump... Thing. I think it's good that she wanted to invite both. Yeah. I think it's that like, and I think it's good to be, give people context that that there was an opportunity to hear from the other side. Yeah. But then, it was on the other side to like not want to do it. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I don't know. I don't disagree with you that she's probably going to be a Camilla supporter. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like she tried her best to 
have it be like a balanced kind of thing Spanish. yeah yep. yeah because you can have your personal beliefs like i can have my personal beliefs but still be open to listening to the other side yeah mm. uh, yeah i think i think the other thing that was really interesting was like Trump also was on a podcast the same week. He was on the Flagrant podcast, which is a podcast I listen to regularly. And it was like really interesting because I heard of Trump's appearance on that podcast before Kamala's. Mm. And they came out like 24 hours within each other. So, was, so like... That interesting. Was, uh, yeah, that was kind of... Because I know especially Trump more than Kamala has declined a bunch of like traditional mm. appearances like the 60 Minutes uh mm. TV network, uh, a bunch of, yeah, like Fox News, CNN, all mm. of them. And I, I think in general, it's it's a good thing. I like where this where this new age media stuff is going because yeah. you get to, I, I feel like it's almost a turnoff when I see any politician on a traditional news network because I, I just know they're going to say what, they're, what the talking points are, blah, blah, blah. But when they sit with a podcast host that has almost nothing to do with politics, mm. you can you can kind of see like a, a more human side of them. Mm. Granted, they are pushing their whole agenda, their propaganda for the, like the whole two hours, blah, blah, blah. But I think it's, you get to see a, diff, a little bit of a different side of them, which is like kind of key for a voter. And also, like, when was the last time that you listened to the news? Like, yep. that you actually watch the news to exactly. get the news. Like, I I put my hand up for yeah. this. <laughs> a lot of what I know that's what's happening in the world right now is literally from TikTok videos. Yeah. It sounds really bad, but that's the fact. Yeah. And, like, they know that, like, in terms of the older generation, like, their vote is very set in stone already. They're yeah. either fully Democrat or they're fully, like... Republican. Republic, Republican, sorry, my bad. Um, but with the younger generation, there's still room for persuasion. Yeah. And I think it's like, it's a smart choice to target them because realistically, that's where the sway vote is. Yeah. Like, that's where you're able to kind of like persuade one way or the other. Yeah. And it's really cool, I think, um, just to see it move there. Um, granted, well, is that really the future of politics? Yeah. You know, but what I don't want to see. What? Politicians doing like TikTok trends. Bro, I, uh, they both are doing it right now. Heavy. Like, not like specific TikTok trends, but like, I keep seeing like these like, I don't know what to call, almost like edits of like Trump and Kamala. And it's like. I don't mind edits, but that when they do like, I don't know, when they do, when they. Oh, Have they done an actual trend? Don't this give me it? like a. <laughs> I'm thinking about the current Prime Minister of New yeah. Zealand. If you oh, see his TikTok no, account, no, 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 no. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just that doing. Is, uh, you know, I have that account blocked. <laughs> it's one of the worst accounts I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I promise you. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's, I don't know. It's just giving, like, oh, the unpaid intern. Like, I'm sorry. Who's running it? Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Back to Camilla. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But let's insert a video here somewhere yeah. of like him doing like a really cringy trend. Yeah. I'm sorry, but yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway. Yeah. No, I think I think the interesting thing is that like this is cool and all, but like I think had Kamala not had the appearance on Call Her Daddy, I think she would have still had like the predominantly female vote. I think the interesting play is that if she goes on these like opposing media outlets. Like, mm -hmm. let's say she she goes on, like, Joe Rogan. Or she mm -hmm. goes on, like, the podcast that Trump went on. I feel like that would be interesting because if, yeah. she's, if she's already, yeah. like... She's kind of confirming the biases of the audience that's, yeah. that was going to vote for her anyway. Yeah. So that almost wasn't going to do anything for her yeah. campaign. I kind of want to see her, like, sit down with, like, Andrew Tate or something. Yeah. Or, like, Joe Rogan. Yeah. Just to, like... Because I feel like they'll challenge her on a lot of views. Yeah. And I, hope, I think it'll be really interesting to see where she really stands on those views. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the, like that pairing would have been really interesting. Yeah. But I think in that in itself is a big risk for her, yeah. and probably a risk that her PR team isn't like willing to take. Yeah, yeah. But it would be so interesting yeah. because like people would expect those those podcast hosts to have certain opinions. Yeah. But yeah, I think her her going on Rogan would be insane. Yeah. And Rogan is like his, I mean, I don't know about him, but his audience is generally like more conservative and stuff. Mm. So if she, if she goes on and she like 
has a like a like a compelling argument for every pushback that she's getting i think she, mm-hmm. she could sway the voting power yeah pretty well. but to be honest when was the last time that a politician had a compelling argument it's just nope. pulling stuff out of the ass yeah <laughs> politics <laughs> like when you he- when you really listen to what they're saying yeah, yeah. aside from the ideologies or like the nice yeah. to haves like yeah That's yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah i had yeah I, I watched um trump on flagrant and yeah it was kind of the equivalent like really because again like I think I don't know about Kamala's appearance on on Call Her Daddy, but it was almost like Trump was trying be was trying to be a bit funny, mm. and so I think that with with that is like it's something about trying to say some fucked up shit and then saying some funny joke about it and be like ah it's humor. Mm. Something about that is so disarming that it's like ah uh, you can kind of like. F- stomach the most fucked up shit in the world if they go about it in like a funny ish way yeah i feel like the thing about trump is that he titters the line between like actually speaking to what like conservative america yeah. wants and also being outrageous enough that people don't take him seriously yeah. so he comes out as like a unsuspecting kind of like yeah. actual contender yeah. because people who take him seriously actually act on what he says, yeah. which is sometimes on the other end of the spectrum and like Insane. incites shit. Yeah. Um, but people who don't support him generally don't take him seriously enough to yeah. want to really listen or watch what's happening. Of course. Um, but look, I'm here for it. Yeah. I think it's a shit show that I yeah. would, I love watching. It was cool. I think, I don't know if it happens in this election, but like, I just, I don't know why in my head I just imagine the presidential candidates having like a TikTok live battle one day. <laughs> oh my god. And oh like my god. Like who the voters are like swinging for and stuff like in real mm-hmm. time. I feel like that would be hard. So yeah. Trump come along make it happen. Or like debates to be like streamed live. Yeah. And like more so like split screen style. Yeah. yeah. Um, just the idea for like a TikTok live battle. It's just like them versus each other and like people are gifting i guess that could be like oh my god donations. that's so wild yeah um it brings me to this um you know how people say that like sim sims simpson yeah. um they predict the future yeah and there's this episode where lisa mm. becomes president and yeah. loki they're comparing it to camilla harris Actually. becoming president yeah. and um how like the world would basically go crazy yeah. but like um but yeah i don't know i think it's funny how he forgot that biden was in the race yeah and then he had to yeah. step back i feel like we just all forgot about it's, that it's it's funnier that he's still president right now we haven't heard of him for the last like three months i feel like yeah he could he may as well be dead like for, like i don't <laughs> know what he's going where he's what he's up to but he may as well be dead. like yeah no one knows where biden is yeah a fun little like story that I feel like you hear is like apparently they had like his dog, his like yeah. family dog, like bit and injured like six of the people, six people in the White House, and like I'm like, why is that dog so aggressive? Yeah, and it's like a whole thing. Yeah, yeah, because it's guarding a corpse, right? So, oh my um, god, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think yeah, Team Trump, Team Kamala. Um, comment down below who you're voting for. I'm voting for neither. Or you? Who are you voting for? I like I'm not American. For, but if you were, myself. No. Yeah, see, that's that's the way to go. Out. So so public, so PR trained. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, comes management, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of of TikTok uh, battles and trends, the latest TikTok trend is dopamine menus. Oh. Now. I actually did not know a single thing about this. I'm pretty sure I was just like, was, am, and will not be the target audience for this mm, trend. It's a very girly pop thing. Yeah, I can kind of tell. Like, the second <laughs> I search it, and I see just like the first six videos are just like six girls that look like 2% different from each other. I'm like, yeah, this is oh my God. not catered for Abdo. <laughs> what? what? What is the dopamine menu? Um, I'd say it's a menu of the things that just make you happy. Yeah. 
So, like, what would your dopamine bunny be? Currently? Mm. That TikTok trend where they make the guy do the, the interpretive dance thing. Which one? No, it's so funny. What is Dude, it? Dude, it's so funny. It's like, my flatmate's boyfriend wants to stay over, so we made him do an interpretive oh, dance. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that, I saw that, I saw that, I saw that. That was so that's hilarious. It's like him applying to, like, stay, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Um that's one of them. Every yeah. time I see, it doesn't get old for me. I've seen so many different versions. Yeah. And it so cracks me up. Yeah. Um, my second, the first sip of an oat milk, hot coffee. Yeah. In the morning. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, what else? Oh, locking eyes with a dog on a street. That's not my dog, but like just making eye contact. Do dogs make eye contact? Yeah, they do. They do. And it's full of love. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Or watching a corgi's butt just bounce in front of you. <laughs> it's so cute. It's like little puff balls. Yeah. Um, I knew a dog once in my apartment building. His name was Broccoli. Mm. It was so cute. Okay, I thought you were going to say something about his ass. <laughs> no. No. His name was just Broccoli, and I, yeah. that was my favorite thing in the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah, what's on your dopamine men- do- uh, dopamine menu? Not much. I mean, ice cold water. Is oh. One. Okay. Like, but it has to be like the the little ice, like the I don't know what you call them, like ice pebbles and stuff. Mm. Um, what else? What else? What else? I'm such a big bag. All I'm thinking is food. <laughs> like <laughs> the Malaysian place down the street. <laughs> Bruh, the Malaysian place down the street. Shout yeah. out to I got I got food. Real ones though. Got to tag them somewhere, bro. Yeah, they're okay. so good. They're so good. <laughs> they're so good. Um, no, I'm trying to think. Um, when there's no cyclists on the road, that is such a good day. Yeah. Um, my music tastes. Your bug spray in the morning. My. <laughs> Wow, you know what? You know what? You know what? Speaking of my bug spray, I have some. I have some news that you were gonna absolutely love the sound of. Uh, it's it's done. It's finished. It's ran, it ran out. I made sure to like spam it every time I spray because I'm like, oh, I can't buy this again. I need to get rid of it. ASAP. <laughs> but I spent too much money to like throw it away. So I think I have the bottle with me in in my bag. But um, yeah, it's basically this perfume that Mel said smelled like absolute insect repellent bug spray. When really it was like a nice oody, woody. Okay, the context tobacco-y. is I literally like we were both staying late working one day, and he was like, "Do you want to ride home because it's raining and shit?" And I was like, "Yes, that's so kind of you." And then I get in his car, <laughs> and I think he like was like self conscious about whether his car smelled or anything because he went to the gym the day before, and like he doused it with this perfume obviously it's gonna be really intense i'm sure like in small doses it's like great but okay look i didn't douse it first of all <laughs> second of all <laughs> okay look i i wasn't i wasn't concerned about the smell i, I mean I, my, I maybe was concerned about the smell of the car but i was more concerned about the smell of me because i had been like i don't know living for the last like tw- i don't know 10 hours maybe eight hours nine hours and i was like okay before it, it was pouring rain so i had to go get the car from the road to the to the workplace mm-hmm. i go get the car from the workplace i'm like oh just before i like drive let me spray two three four five six seven eight sprays of this perfume that i just bought that i was like oh this is it's so nice it's most so premium and expensive and old money i am so sorry i um i drive back to the workplace <laughs> she hops in this, the first dude she hops in the first thing she goes did you spray <laughs> did you spray bug spray and i'm like I'm so sorry. <laughs> it gets worse. My dumbass was so embarrassed. I had to go, I had to run with it. I was like, yeah, yeah, I did. I um, had a deep clean with the car yesterday. I have not deep cleaned the car in like fucking three weeks since then. <laughs> like it was. Yeah, he it kept was going. Something. I wasn't even asking anymore. I was just like. Yeah. yeah. And the, drive, the drive was like three minutes, but it felt like 15. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I just like this. Yeah. And I. <laughs> I don't know if you caught on, but I did this thing where like I was like sniffing. I was like, "Yeah, it does smell." I got it off, and I was like, "Fucking double that." Uh, anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the podcast. We'll see you tomorrow. Mel, any final words? I'm sorry, Abdel. You're good. Peace. Bye. <laughs>